Hey there, it's Rachel from All About The House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a monogram screensaver background for your phone. You could use this same method for your tablet, your iPad, your laptop, or any other device that you want to personalize. So on your um, iPhone, go to whatismyscreenresolution.com and it will tell you the dimensions that you need to make it. So I've got mine in front of me and mine says 375 pixels by 667. So when we go to file new, that is what you type in here. Make sure that you change it to pixels. And that was 667. You want to choose transparent. I always just leave it as RGB color and the other defaults that Photoshop applies and then hit OK. So now we've got our template. So to make a really um, simple one really quickly, I use digital papers. So I do make my own patterns from scratch in Photoshop. I do have an e-course for that. If you're interested, I'll include the link below. But if you want to speed it up and make something real quick, then just use a digital paper. You can find them plenty of places online um, in my graphic design resources shop. I have a couple for free on my blog. Or if you do a search on Etsy, it will come up with an overwhelming number of them. Um, you're spoilt for choice. You can pick any pattern that you like. So to bring a pattern into Photoshop, you want to go to File, New, and make a new template, which is the size of your digital paper. Most of them are 12 by 12 inches. The reason that I create a whole separate file to bring it in is because if you put it straight in here, it's going to automatically shrink to fit the dimensions of your template. So let's say that I was using a polka dot pattern. Um, I quite like this one here. Um, so if you left click and drag to bring it in, see how it automatically reduces it and you end up with this awkward gap at the top and the bottom. If you then increase, it's going to make your image blurry. So don't do that. Go to your new layer here and then left click and drag it in that way and then press enter. Now you want to right click that layer and hit duplicate and then go to your first template that you created. So untitled one and hit OK. So now we have it nice and big. So we want to just delete that other one. Now press Control T, you might want to zoom out by pressing Control and your minus sign. And we now want to shrink it down. So find a corner, make sure it's a corner, not one of these ones. Hold down Shift and then drag your mouse inwards until you're happy with the size of it. That looks pretty good to me. You don't want to go too small or it gets really busy. At the same time, you don't want to go too big. If you weren't happy with the size and you wanted to resize it, you just press Control T and do the same thing again, um, increasing or decreasing until you're happy with it. Now, it is one of my pet hates when um, patterns cut things off unevenly. So like this one, for example, where we've got a little bit showing down the bottom, but then more up the top. Same deal on the left and the right. It's not like symmetrical and even. It just looks messy and I really, it's like OCD. I hate it. Okay, so let's make it a bit bigger and even it out more. So that looks pretty good. And go enter. So now we want to make sure that it is centered over our template. We've got this little awkward gap here. So let's fix that. Click on the marquee tool, which is this square with the dash border. Off the edge here in this grayed out area, left click and drag so that you've got that dash border appearing on all sides. Click on the move tool, press this button here to align it to the center and then this one down the bottom to um, align it at the top and the bottom. So if you're happy with that, great. If not, you may need to just tweak it again slightly. This is the most time consuming part, just aligning up the pattern however you like it. If you're not as OCD as I am, then this step will be a lot quicker for you. Alrighty, I'm gonna go a smidge more. And just a little bit again. I'm sorry, it is, it's like a real problem. I, I literally have like OCD over this stuff. Okay, looks good. Now let's add our backing. So you can just add a like monogram or your text straight over the top of the pattern, but I find it doesn't really stand out. So I like to add a backing behind it. So let's create a new layer. Come over to the shape tool, right click. Now I personally prefer to use the ellipse tool, which is a circle. You could also do a rectangle or a rounded rectangle or use the custom shape tool. There's a heart that comes with Photoshop or you can download shapes. There's so many different types of backings that you can create. Um, you can also do hexagons, stars as well with the polygon tool. But let's keep it simple and use the ellipse for now. So I'm going to go to make sure it's got shape, go to the fill color. Now what I like to do is extract a color from the pattern. So click this button here and it'll come up with this eyedropper that appears. If you hover over the color that you want it to match and then left click. So I really like this pink. It'll automatically find that exact color match for you. And then if you hit OK, we can now make our circle. So if you left click, you can enter in the dimensions that you want it to be. 
um, you just go like two inches by two inches and hit OK. Or if you're not sure on the exact dimensions that you want, just left click and drag with your mouse. To create a perfect circle, hold down the shift key. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. And you want to just align it to the center, exact same as we did before with the pattern. So now we can add our monogram over the top. Um, if you weren't happy with the size of that circle, same thing like we did with the paper. You can just keep tweaking it until you're happy with it. So for monograms, there's so many different types of fonts that you can use. I personally prefer to use simple block style fonts. So one of my favorites is Trajan, Trajan, however you pronounce it, Pro. And if you left click, you can then type in your monogram. So I'm going to use an R because my name is Rachel. And let's align that to the center as well. And you want to make sure that it is appearing over the top of your ellipse layer. With some fonts, they have, for example, like this one, this bit kicks out a lot further than the edges of the R over here. So if you use the arrow key on your keyboard, you can just move it um, until you're happy with the alignment of it. Some of the other fonts that I like using for monograms are Rockwell, um, Times New Roman. Yep, I know Times New Roman actually does good monograms. And you can also do, um, like don't use fonts like Calibri. You want to choose something that has a bit of a swish, like an effect on the ends of the letter. So for example, S, this one has a bit of extra touch on it rather than just boring plain. Um, like Calibri is a really bad font to use. Monograms, I do not recommend it at all. You want to choose something that's got those little features on it because it creates a better look. Um, you can do a three letter monogram. I do have another tutorial on how to do that. Um, I won't go into it in this video because it's probably already getting a bit long, but I'll include that link below if you're interested. The other thing that you can do is a simple two letter monogram. So you just literally type the two uh, letters, press control A and then shrink it down to fit the frame that you've chosen or just to fit the size of your background. So you can do two letters. I personally prefer to just do one. I think it looks better. Um, let's bump that back up. Okay, so the other thing that you can do is add an inner border around your frame um, or an outer border if you wanted to. So at the moment, I think this looks a little plain. I want to add a little bit of extra um, touch to it. So let's go to new layer, back to the shape tool. This time we want to turn off the fill and turn on the stroke. So the stroke is a border around your shape um, and then fill obviously will put the color in. So at the moment, we're just going to have a white border circle. So if we left click and drag, remember to hold down shift, we can then add that to our design and it just gives it a bit of extra um, nicer touch. That's a bit fat and it's a bit close to the R at the moment. So let's align everything to the center. Uh, click on the first layer, hold down shift and click on your last one and then just align it all to the middle. And my font, I would say is a bit big for that. I personally prefer to have a bit of space between my letters and the edge of the circle. Some people prefer to have it really big and close to the edge. I don't. Um, to me, that looks good. If you wanted to increase or decrease the thickness of your border, come up here to stroke and let's make it two point. If you wanted it bigger, if you wanted it smaller, obviously just reduce it. And the other thing that you can do, if you didn't want a solid line, you could make it a dash line or looks pretty good. A dotted line always looks nice as well. It's quite pretty. Just be careful with the um, dotted line. It can get like this where it's close together. So you want to increase your stroke to space that out a bit more. Let's go five points too big, 2.5. That looks better. Um, so that will space it out nicely for you. You could do a double inner border if you wanted to you create a duplicate of this one and then shrink it down a little bit so you had two borders. You could do a solid and a dash line. There's so many different variables that you can do. And now that you've got this template created, you want to go to File, Save As, and make sure you save it as a Photoshop file, which is .psd file format. And now whenever you're sick of this as your screensaver on your phone, you can just come back to the template that you've already created, switch out the digital paper, change the colors, tweak the font, whatever you want to do. Um, and then really quickly, you'll create another one that you can then use for your phone. So save the template for future use. Now that you've got the template saved, after you go and do that, you can now save it ready to use on your phone. So you want to go to File, Save As, and this time you would pick JPEG file format. So then that way you can um, email it to yourself, open it up on your phone and set that as your wallpaper. 
I'll have um, some screenshots and tips below on how to set that up if you're not sure and how to set it as your screensaver on your phone. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you wanted to use the same technique for a tablet or an iPad or anything else, just go to that whatismyscreenresolution.com and then you can either start from scratch and go to file new and create a new template or you can use the template that you've already got and go to image, canvas size and then change it in here. You'd want to change it to pixels, type in the dimensions you want it to be and then just tweak it. So if you were using this for um, a tablet or whatever, um, let's go with say like a thousand. I have no idea what size tablets are. Um, I don't have one. All right, let's go okay. So now it's a lot bigger. Um, you can just increase or decrease the pattern to suit the new size of your template. Same with your monogram. So all you'd have to do is select all of them, press Control T. Um, I just left clicked, hold, held down Shift to click on the bottom with all of them selected. Press Control T and then increase or decrease it to suit the new size of your template. And then you go File, Save As. So obviously I wouldn't save this because it's got this awkward bit at the top and the bottom and it's not the proper size of the background, but you get what I mean. You go to image, canvas size, tweak it, and then just resave it. Don't worry about creating it from scratch. If you already like the design, just change the size and you will be good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials. And I also have a ton of e-courses, free and paid, with a lot more Photoshop tutorials, literally like everything, how to use all the tools if you're just starting from scratch. Um, more advanced things like making patterns um, and also have more tutorials on my blog as well. So all of these links will be below and don't forget to subscribe. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you next time.